Welcome back to another Darktable tutorial. In this video, we're going to be bringing in some raw photos and editing those raw photos and developing them, uh, improving them. So in the last tutorial, we kind of had these things brought in. I just want to show you how to kind of clean this up a little bit. Um, we can go to the select box over here and we can go select all. That'll select everything in here. And then what we can do is under the selected images, we have all kinds of options for things we can do to those selected images. Um, we can like reset rotation, we can duplicate all of these, we can copy them. If we do duplicate, they're all duplicated. So we have a duplicate copy of each one of these. And now only the only uh, every other one is selected. And we can go to select all again, and we can just go to uh, remove, and that will remove them from uh, Darktable. I believe trash will actually delete them from the computer, so don't do that one. Uh, but anyway, so now we have, we're have we back to the, the start here, and I want to bring in some raw photos. I want to show you, I have a couple different ones. I have some that I shot, and I have some that I downloaded. Oh, where are they at? So uh, here's just some that I shot. We can just click, and uh, I think I have it set up right now, so that if I, if I click on my raw photo, it opens it up in Darktable. But you can also right-click and go Open With uh, on my particular computer, and I can open up raw photos with Image Viewer. So I can just look at this picture in my image viewer. Your computer may be a little bit different on this. But these are some pictures I took just the other day, and I made sure to shoot them with my Canon camera in RAW mode. So they're this .CR2, which is a Canon RAW format. And when I opened this one up, like we learned in the last video, it created sort of a metadata uh, or a, a dark table edit file associated with it. So when we edit this picture now here in Darktable, it's only going to apply edits um, not to the picture directly. It, it's non-destructive editing is what that's called. So we have this picture here. We see in the light table, we have just a single picture now. And in the dark room, it brings up it brings up the last tool we had in use, which is this vignette, I think. Is that what's going on here? So yeah. And that's under, well, what we can do before we get ahead of ourselves, we can come over here to see what effects are being applied to the picture. So let's look at that real quick. There's these different icons. We can left click and toggle between them. This very first one shows us like a power button icon. And so this shows us which ones are enabled. There's a tiny little thing right here. It's kind of hard to see, but it shows us this is this picture is automatically being sharpened. It's automatically having a base curve applied. The orientation is automatically on. Uh, highlight reconstruction, white balance, all of these are on and enabled by default right now with this picture. So we can click on white balance. We can change the temperature of this, which will change. So now we have a much brighter, more of like a yellow warm sky. And then if we wanna see what it looks like with that not applied, we can click this button here and it will go back to how it was before anything was applied. So it looks very green right now. This is kind of the more raw how it was taken. And then this is with it applied. So you can apply and um, de-apply or enable and disable any of the uh, any of these effects being applied just by clicking on this button right here. Um, another way that we can change and see what's happening is by going over to the history and we can look at the very original picture. So this is originally what it looked like. And then after applying sharpen, it looks like this. After applying the orientation, it looks the same because it wasn't rotated. After applying the base curve, it looks a little bit different here. So we can see between this step here and this step here, it's quite a bit different. And then the white balance being applied is different as well. Highlight reconstruction, not a lot of change there. And then this uh, a white balance again uh, is being applied. So this just shows us our history stack of all the changes that have, that have gone through here. At any point, if we want to, we can go just to this base curve point and we can export it right here. If we go into the to light table now, it appears the same way that it does in dark room. I wanna bring in some more photos from this photo shoot. So I'll go over here to this folder under import and I'll just import the entire directory of all the pictures shot in this photo shoot. And what that does is it lets us see uh, everything in here that was shot. So I'll grab like maybe this uh, picture of these rocks right here because I wanna show you what's applied by default by Darktable. We can see that by looking over here in the history again we can go back to the original. So this is a little bit processed. It's still pretty close to raw, but it's still processed. If we click on original, we see what the original image look like. Uh, looks like. This is the raw image. It's kind of dull. It doesn't have any sharpening applied, doesn't have the base curve applied. And so we can see what each step would look like. 
and we see it's enhanced just subtly by default by Darktable. So just be aware, if you want to work from the very, very beginning, you want to click on this original and start working from there. But it's a good idea. This base curve is really, I don't understand it entirely, but over here we can find the base curve if we click on the, the effects that are enabled. We see this base curve is a Canon base curve. And so we can see if it were shot with a Nikon, we'd be able to do like this Nikon-like, and it looks a little different or if it was on like Panasonic or these different ones. But since my camera was a Canon camera that actually shot this image, and since that was attached to the metadata of that raw picture, it just automatically applied this. And what it's doing is, is giving us an accurate representation of the lighting and the colors because it knows how Canon processes pictures or, or creates raw images, how that sensor you know, records light. Anyway, so we want to keep this the same, but if we wanted to change it, we can come over here and adjust it a little bit, and we can make changes, and that'll adjust this. Um, if ever we change it too much, we can click this little icon here, and it sets everything to default. In this case, it's the default curve, which is a straight line, which gives us kind of how it looked back in the original. But we can come over here and, uh, again, apply the Canon-like curve, which gives us a, a kind of a different look. Um, I want to show you on this too, we can do one thing like this white balance, we can you know change the temperature like we did before, make it a little warmer, make it a little cooler. Uh, exposure, if we want to find a certain thing before we mess with too much with temperature, we might want to do exposure. So we can find exposure, it's actually one of the ones, I think it's over here, yeah. So if we click this circle here, exposure is one of the options we have. But we can find it from down below as well, and then exposure we can just adjust if maybe we feel like parts of this are underexposed or overexposed, we can adjust it accordingly. And we can use this histogram up here as a reference to see if we're kind of clipping data. So we're clipping a little bit of data in there. And so we can adjust this to kind of make that fill our whole area. And then we kind of see kind of that's more bright. And so we could adjust that somewhere else. This is probably a good time to point out that I'm really not um, a photographer and I'm not into, I'm, I'm not really experienced in color correcting and, and photo enhancing. So I'm just trying to, to demonstrate Darktable and show you how to use the effects. Um, but unfortunately, I'm going to be limited in what I'm actually able to show you from an artistic or from a, uh, you get what I'm saying, right? From that standpoint. Anyway, I feel like this is a good point to end this video on. Uh, I just want to show you down here at the bottom, we touched a little bit on it, but any of these things we want to add, we can click over here and a star will appear, and it will be then added to our favorites. So we have a couple different things added to our favorites. If there's one that you're using all the time, you might want to just add it to your favorites. And then quickly you'll have a nice little workflow. It's a little bit daunting at first, but just know that this one shows you which ones are enabled by default. You can disable them and enable them. And then these other ones just show you ones that deal more with like color. You can hover over them and it tells you this deals with more of tone. This one's your basic group, which is kind of what you, it's a good idea to go through and adjust these at first. And so when you're just getting started, I would say go through and play with these and just see how it adjusts your picture. And you're gonna find some things that you like to use and, and like to not use. Anyway, appreciate you watching. Um, check out the next tutorial. We'll be learning about snapshots and how to look at before and afters. And uh, we'll play some more with some different effects as well. Catch you in the next video.